close however to begin the, the discussion i'm going to ask each one of you uh, the opening question which is how bad was the pandemic shock to your segment and what trends do you see for recovery uh, i guess um, um, mr jain will cover the consulting side of the business for that particular question while mr kamath and dhananjay will take care of the hotel and of the hotel space including the fnb service space in india over to you mr thanks abhinash thanks a lot uh, for introducing us and giving this opportunity uh, no doubt about this that uh, pandemic been a nightmare for the entire hospitality and travel and tourism industry we all gone through this terrible pain time but this uh, you know pain has brought a lot of opportunities at the same time especially talking about the leisure segment leisure segment which is the most underserved space in our indian hospitality industry uh, if i talk about the existing supply across india in organized space total we have 160000 room inventory across the country which is 16% of the entire inventory what we have in the country so you know a billion rooms and 160000 is only in the organized space uh, if i talk about the new york that is itself the new york state has more rooms than that so if we talk about the you know the demand requirement that is among us in within our country and 87% of our demand is domestic driven we don't have to look outward because within the country we have so much demand available for us now when i come to the leisure the penetration is further lower it is only 4% if i talk about mumbai this is a branded space this is a branded space obviously uh, you know even the supply side if i talk about the unbranded space even that is much lower than the demand you do one event like this the entire uh, you know inventory in and around this area will be packed and you will be have room selling at last you know 5% inventory at 16000 20000 a night also that's only because you don't have a limited supply i will just tell you one example like in lolawala which is uh, two and a half hour drive from mumbai uh, mumbai which is uh, is a country in my opinion of 2.5 uh, cr population you can count the branded supply on your hips after four and five you have names only we recently did a a uh, visibility report not recently but uh, two or uh, two years back we did a visibility report in a place called netrang it is uh, you know a part of the Bar uh, baruch district in gujarat the uh, owner came to us it was he was having a, a land of around 500 acres and totally confused what to do what not to do whether i should retain i sell it and all and uh, he asked us why don't you guys do best use analysis for this our research team went we did a visibility report on that project and we saw humongous tremendous potential because the connectivity was good that is actually point which we were discussing uh, 15 minutes back with that connectivity uh, it was a equal distance from vadodara and surat now when we did a feasibility report believe me none of the operators the organized operator believed in that report they said that we don't see any demand here you know there is no historical data first question every chief executive told to us there is no historical data how we can say that whether a mid segment will work or, or you know or upscale or luxury will work we still you know had a belief in our report we went ahead we found uh, you know confidence with uh, mahindra the mahindra resorts guys signed a 60 room resort over there and that's also reluctant otherwise normally they do 100 plus so they signed 60 room after opening even during pandemic times within first three months that asset was at 102 percent occupancy it's under box that show the depth today at the same place we are adding 50 more rooms for mahindra and last week we have signed a resort of 250 rooms in the same vicinity of there and that's how destinations gets developed so all i'm saying that the potential in leisure segment is humongous all we need to go with a scientific approach look towards the right opportunities and if you are invested i can prove the irrs are as good as 20% which people say no it's not possible in hospitality as it is 7 or 8% or even lower than that it's very much possible you can do irr of 20% provided you pick up the right project right location and you are investing smartly and building the right product i think the payback is for you i can prove it with the live project which we have doing so vishal with that kind of a number and since you are a entrepreneur industrialist hospitality professional as well in addition to you own hotel jura hotel you manage properties you do fnb 
what is your response to whatever you just mentioned? There is, uh, I mean, data is data. So you cannot really argue against data. You can use it to your benefit. And sometimes that's what comes, that's what differentiates an entrepreneur from a professional. An entrepreneur goes by a certain gut feel and strength, innate strength, as compared to a professional who will want to take certain parameters and take a call. So if today an entrepreneur has taken a call and he has got a backing by someone like him, then he has got rewarded. And the professional, that is Mahindra, also got rewarded. So sometimes uh, in our industry especially, it's an it's a industry of entrepreneurs. You may not necessarily be the owner of your hotel, but if you have an entrepreneurial mindset, then only your f &B will do well, then only will your hotel have a value more than just it being a business. Like in our case, you know, our environmental commitment, which also ITC does to a great extent, so it's commendable that what is our contribution beyond just our business. See, uh, this um, forum reminds me of that song, you know, Chodo kal ki baate, kal ki baat purani, nahi dor ko likhte, milkar nahi kaani, hum hotel wale, hum hotel wale. I mean, today I would, I did not expect so much crowd and I'm grateful to OTM to have that confidence. I'm grateful to all these participants who have come, who many must have been skeptical, but look at the kind of participation and look at the kind of people who have visited the stalls. So I think the uh, brightness of our industry is not in question. It's only about having sustainability as a thought and playing every game as a T20. I think for the next one year, we need to forget what used to happen in a certain month and take each month on its own. Like right now monsoon is coming, some places go down, some places go up. But as we've all seen, all metrics of the past have now ceased to exist. Thanks to, you know, schooling from home and other things from home. So I think the time has come to play a one day every a one day test match uh, every month rather than trying to make a, you know, uh, sorry, to a T20 every month rather than playing a test match for the whole year and having a I think the mindset change that's Every important. day is a new day. So I'll circle back to you um, before we, Dhananjay, uh, you've been through the ups and downs, you've seen how um, during COVID, pre-COVID, post-COVID, uh, pre-COVID Dhananjay used to be the sales and marketing head for Sagar, after which of course he is now the head of the Fortune and he also supports the Welcome Heritage brand. How do you see the two various distinct chains or groupings? that are there in India and what is your view of how the customer views or the, even the employee views for example, the international change vis-a-vis the Indian change that include us and Mr. Kamal's business as well. So, <coughs> coming from the pre-COVID days, I think um, it has taught us a big lesson. First and foremost, everybody has learned something which is, which will help us to improvise our way of functioning. Uh, be it an efficiency, be it an efficiency in operating our hotel, be it an efficiency in manpower, profitability, uh, owner's mindset, everything is, is it was a learning. Coming to the travel agents community here, I'm sure all of you have gone through as entrepreneurs of some travel company or working with the travel company, how things have changed. What every hotel company has seen is an opportunity with the leisure segment. The dependability on a corporate segment or my segment vanished completely. There was no corporate travel, there was no mice happening because corporates had restricted the mice and only thing was that was moving was leisure travel and with that backed by weddings and socials. So we started seeing that big change and as a company we have started now focusing on all leisure destinations to grow our brand portfolios. So that's a big shift from where we First priority was corporate, mainline cities and secondary cities. Now we are going into it. Just not leisure, but also pilgrimage. So pilgrimage destinations are now coming up. So people want to go and stay in a good hotel. We always thought we should not go to a pilgrimage place and spend. But recently, IDC opened a hotel in Katra. All is selling at 10,000 rupees, 8 to 10,000. So, so everybody, there is a market for this, and that's an opportunity for all travel trade people here, that how you can capitalize. Travel agents are going to be the new consultants. From a transactional mode, they have to start thinking as a consultative. It's hard to win the customer's mind now, much more than before. Because 
now we have to go on convincing. They want to know where they stay, what do they do, what are the all the things, how safe is the place, how safe is the hotel. So safety becomes the first luxury now. So likewise, all travel train people here should be knowing about the product protocols, what the hotel follows. It's important that you guys also get educated about the brands, what do they do, what do they do differently, and how we can support you in this exercise. So, Learning from that, I think this is one big shift of change. Like you mentioned that it is now not a day-to-day -day affair. It's no more a one, one design. It's you keep designing and changing your thoughts every day. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, um, I'd like to add um, an element here. Often discussed in a lot of sessions today that the current trend is uh, transient in nature. Um, which means that Whatever you just mentioned about rates, etc., occupancies, your case study, all these are happening for the moment and they will all vanish the minute outbound travel begins or the market opens. And uh, for people who are going to be investing in the future, what is your view of the nascent leisure business that Mr. Jane mentioned about? Is it going to vanish? Uh, is it going to grow? Uh, is it just a passing phase because of COVID or you think it's going to sustain over the next couple of years or maybe decades? We can start with Vishal um, because you handle business as well as leisure and you probably have a fair idea. Coming back to the consulting side, how has the consulting business changed in this process? Because you will be getting all the queries in your office and of course, um, Ranan Jay's hotel chain is primarily business. And how is that going to change their way of thinking uh, going forward? So, uh, while I do share the enthusiasm to expand to leisure, I don't know whether the figures will be sustainable, not only because of foreign destination opening up, it's also because today a lot of your normal life cycle is quite artificial. Your kids aren't going to school, you're also working from home, your social commitments have come down drastically. You know, we as a, as a family, you know, all of us don't have a Western or a European concept of Saturday, Sunday. You go for a wedding on a Monday to Monday. If you want to go to the wedding every time, it will be bad. So, we will go to the office and I will go to the wedding. That doesn't go. So, today all these things aren't there. So, a family can quickly say as a nuclear thought, okay, let's go and and if you see, a lot of the leisure destinations have done well around large population pockets, specifically flying out to time. So, leisure will have movement of course, and people are now taking more frequent holidays, so that's what will definitely help the leisure segment. But whether they will have these sustained numbers, because let's understand, Saturday, Sunday is your bread and butter, it is not your Malay. Your Malay in leisure comes from Monday to Thursday. How much can you get someone to come and stay with you when your occupancy is not on a holiday time? People think Ulta. Many people make the mistake and think that Saturday, Sunday is your Malay time. No. Saturday, Sunday, if it's gone, your bread and butter is gone. If your long weekend is paid, due to any reason whatsoever, you are stuck. But if your Monday to Friday, you are able to take out a simple occupancy also with a decent ARR and keep the light going, keep the staff cost going, get out the food cost, you are going to have a great EBITDA at the end of the month. So it's not about a Saturday, Sunday. Many people fall in, in F&B especially, many people come to a restaurant and say, Arre yaar, gaya tha Saturday raat ko jagha nahi tha. Manak kya chaap raha hai. But the reality is, you come on a Monday to Friday, or rather a Monday to Thursday, how much has that restaurant been able to pull as a brand in terms of offering customers on a weekday? That will decide whether it's a successful restaurant or not. So leisure is definitely so the way forward. So you are saying that it's a, you should temper this enthusiasm, what you are saying? I feel even everyone needs to be prudent. You cannot do business based on sunshine. You have to be able to say, okay, if it rains, what happens? Where's my umbrella? And at the same time, when it's shining, how do I make hay? So I would suggest that everybody needs to be very moderate and practical because whatever benefit we've seen, it's not going to last. Whether it's ADRs, whether it's occupancies, I'm not saying it's going to come crashing down. But definitely it will get tempered because also competition has increased. A lot of better qualitative destinations, new destinations have opened up because let's, now the Orchid opened at Shimla. Touchwood is doing very well. But if a person says, okay, I don't want to only go to Shimla, I want to go beyond Shimla. 
and he then clubs that with a Shimla. So he may see four nights in Himachal, but he'll go probably to a Narkanda or he'll go to some Nadera or he'll go to you know so many of these apple growing beds and then on his way back stay maybe two nights in Shimla and then come I mean that's one of the trends we see. So you know it's that's how it is. Um, Nandi, I think this is a, this is a catch for situation. Mr. Karma still believes, in spite of the numbers they put up. By the way, he runs the most, one of the most successful producers of the city. And so he is he's used to seeing the last 20 years of that property giving him lots of money. So it's very difficult to change his mindset. However, our consulting point would like to talk to him. Because you know, he has to decide the next stage of his business. Where should he invest? One more hotel in Bombay, all places in high-end leisure, experiential leisure, three to four star. Those are the calls we will take today. Just to counterpoint, he mentioned that the Indian leisure segment is terribly under Over to you. Uh, you're absolutely right. When you come to business audience, I'm not doubting what, uh, you know, uh, Vishal is saying. He's absolutely right because the land cost is so high and above all in a city like Mumbai where the premium cost is as good as 6,500 to 7,000 rupees per square foot, your yields are never going to be more than 4 to 5 percent. You can't even service your debt. If we go with the western standard where equity proportion is 20 percent and 80 percent you take from the uh, banks to build your project. For sure, that's not going to work in India scenario. All these projects go went to NCLT or into the banking deposit. The simple reason, because debt proportion was more than what that debt structure can survive for. So I'm not at all saying that the business hotel have a very shiny time. No, in terms of the, I will say it's a time of consolidation rather when it comes to business hotels. You know, uh, you need to realign your debt, you need to raise the equity, you need to break it down, because that's the fundamental problem what we have. You need a separate debate to discuss that what are those fundamental problems. Okay, because the finance minister, or finance ministry, I will say, you have to understand that it is an infrastructure, it's not a real estate. The biggest problem that we feel that hospitality hotel is a real estate, which I completely disagree. It's a real estate if I build and I sell, or I lease it out and my role from that project is over. I'm not doing, after building, I'm running the business, just like the automobile business or textile business. Now if you want to, you know, position as a country, as a, on a global tourist map, global travel map, you need to have more supply. If you are asking, let's say, 20 million people to come and visit your country, if you don't have a room, where are you going to put them? Just not a way. Supply, uh, supply is not available. That's the reality. That's the reason I think, and country need to go through its own motions to reach to that level. So connectivity and multiple other you know concerns are there. Coming to the point which I mentioned in my opening remarks about the leisure potential, I strongly believe because the penetration is so low, okay, there is still immense opportunity to build more. My organization, which before pandemic used to get visibility reports, like 80% was for business hotels and 20% was leisure, is have reversed now. 80% of requirements, and those requirements are like large chunks. We are right now running a feasibility report in a market called Sindhudur, which is uh, like 40 kilometers away from uh, Goa, uh, Mumbai airport, I will say, 30 to 40 kilometers away. In that market, and the gentleman is, you know, more bullish than us. Okay, because he's seen, and he's absolutely right, the entrepreneurs have, a, works a lot of time on the gut. They need a consulting partner like us to you know, balance out that uh, conviction what they have. Mark my words, in the next five years, you will find tremendous opportunity and supply coming in these destinations which are open for vegans, which are open for mice, and mice will definitely come back. It's a matter of few months. It's a, uh, all the, uh, we actually done a recently survey where we uh, went to IT companies, automobile companies, and we have done, uh, spoken with their HR departments, and admin departments and all that. They all have requirement for this. And uh, generally was the bad month, I'm not, you know, disagreeing because obviously Omnicorn and all. But if you look towards the March numbers, the markets have already picked up. And next quarter, hopefully, the markets will be back to pre pandemic levels. I just want to add, I just want to add one point. Uh, it's not that I'm saying leisure is not the way forward or the way forward. I'm just saying that as an owner, you have to have a balanced approach, like look at us. 
we also have leisure we have port jadavpur at pune doing exceedingly well we have lotus at goa we have lotus at konar we have a hotel at puri these are all leisure destinations and the coast of konkan we have and we been in siddhadurg way 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 back when you know people didn't know other than the school book but the point i'm making is that it's a balanced portfolio where sometimes when things go wrong in leisure cities to support when things go wrong in city leisure is to support i as an owner if you can diversify yourself I, is I, I would have put up another hotel in Mumbai? Never, never, because I not even get maybe five percent like this. But if today I go to a tier two, tier three, or if I have a land bank and I'm able to end cash on that land bank, then I would always go for a diverse portfolio whereby I hedge my bets. All of us have a uh, financial planning. You don't only take shares. You take some FD, some shares, some gold, some house. You you bifurcate your portfolio. So that tomorrow, if something goes plus or minus, you can do something about it, and that's what my point is, sir. That leisure is definitely a way forward, and Sindhudurga is a gold mine. But that to remove that gold is a lot of effort. So it is going to take time. But it's important to have a balance. It's a pointed question. You have a hundred CR to invest. How much in leisure? How much in business? If I had a hundred CR to invest, first I would. Buy a car and fancy stuff. But, you no, know, I already have all that, sir. My uh, only have fancy car. I, I don't really need wealth for uh, pleasure. I definitely need to see how I will make value of it. And at that time, not necessary. I may even invest in our own, when I say hospitality, because today one more thing which as a family we have learned is that we also need to make sure that we have a little diversity in what we offer. If we are too sector specific, there are challenges. So if I had 100 crores, I first decide how much I'm going to put in hospitality, and within that, what is it I'm going to use to leverage leisure and city, city Kolapur, Sholapur, you know, Aurangabad, um, Nasik, Thana. Now Thana also, if you look at it, bifurcated further into Bhivandi. So you think in the micro sense, not only a Bombay, Delhi, Nagpur, not just big cities. Go further down, and that's where your probably value capture is. Like he said, in the middle of Surat and Baroda. The value capture. So investing is again. That's how I would go about with hundred crores. DJ, would you like to give your part for something? Yeah. Uh, what what we have seen now in the last uh, few years is clearly we have seen, like you said, the secondary cities are giving the value back to us in terms of positioning average room rates. We recently opened a hotel in Hubli. It's a second. Just standing hotel right in front of the airport. The owner wanted to invest. We were initially hesitant whether we should go for it or not when we did the assessment. But we have now positioned ourselves in the market data with a 4,500 ARR, while the others are all around two and a half, three. Years. So value will come. Uh, the positioning has to happen, and we have to in turn give the value back to the customers and to the ownership, both sides, the stakeholders. Coming back to travel, I think. It's already been picked up. It's a little difficult to recover from the corporate travel business. It's coming up slowly, but it was easy to recover in the secondary cities of corporate travel, be it in uh, uh, Vijayawada or be it in, uh, like I said, Bangalore was difficult, but not necessarily Mysore or any other states like Manipal and all these places. Gurgaon was difficult, but not around the NCR region, some other places. So secondary cities is the way to go. Uh, in terms of investment, in terms of opportunities for us as well. Uh, but having said that, leisure will continue to drive in a way to balance out the portfolio, like you said. It will be a good mix. A chain should have a good mix of leisure and and business hotels. And mice will be a common thing with all kinds of locations. So uh, we see a great uh, pickup now starting. We have already seen the traction coming in month of March. Uh, good business on the books coming into April as well. Uh, and again, the great Indian fat Indian wedding will drive uh, revenues to every kind of locations. So, new destinations is very important for leisure. I think otherwise people will get bored going to the same places. People want different new new locations, new hideaways, and all kinds of accommodation are taking place in the space here now. It's not just a great five star, two star. We are seeing all kinds of locations. Home stays are picking up. Everything is picking up. So opportunity exists from the complete accommodation levels. It doesn't matter what people have different options, and everybody will survive as long as we give back the value to the customer. So consumer is the king. 
and I think we work around that. It's important for travel consultants like you all to change your hat into a consultative mode than simply being very transactional. So that's a bit of um, one of the points you raised, uh, Ranjay, which I will ask each of you now to elaborate on, is that during COVID, you mentioned this is a wake-up call for us. Now, having said that, what are the fundamental changes that each one of you have made in your own organization, which you feel will dramatically change the way companies used to work earlier and the way they would work the next five to ten years? So what changes have you as a CEO, all of you are heads of organizations, and what changes have you made, whether it's cost or AI or it's technology or it's, you know, workspaces, whatever? Yeah, from the ownerships, cost management becomes a high priority item, but at the same time, we can't get into that level that we have comp compromise in services. So, I think clients are looking for getting their value, like I said, safety is the first priority now, and Luxury is not anymore the first time. Safety becomes a new luxury. So people are looking for that, whether the protocol is maintained in that hotel. So we need to have those talented staff. We should bring back those uh, investment back into people, the people who are in the, the employees of the hotel, and give that services. And they have to be trained. I think training is very critical now to make them feel uh, it's not about just the way they used to serve or the way they used to do the things before. So the new approach will start happening and it is happening. I mean since COVID we have all learned that. Uh, so I think that is one of the points. Uh, another point what I would say is wherever you have the direct access, that destination will thrive. Easy access is what people are looking for, be it international, be it domestic. I mean I'm talking as an industry outbound on uh, international, whichever that, I think we drive away, direct flights, those destinations will pick up, will continue to thrive. So we, as investors, you should look at that as also as an opportunity. But again, new destinations are required. New hideaways is very important that we set in the road. But all these places never heard of, while popular Jaipur, Goa, all these other uh, traditional destinations. We have to move on from those destinations and give value to our customers. So Avinash, actually, uh, for our side of business, we actually went for the expansion. But for us, it was a consolidation time. We just sold two hotel companies. One was uh, subsidiary to Royal Orchids, uh, three hotels. It was acquired by East Metric. We completed our co last quarter that transaction. And the second one was with the uh, class group of hotels. Uh, it was uh, 1589 hotels. They also had a portfolio of around 40 hotels. So that was acquired by Suba Group. So, uh, like that, last year we completed 100 uh, assignments, so it was we were on uh, expansion speed internally. Because consulting business leader did different. Consultants, did you add people to your staff? Yeah, yeah we did that. We opened uh, three new offices. Offices really went up in four. There was genuine demand for consulting assignments. The decision which were prior you was taking without taking a expert uh, advice or expert scientific data, I will say. People want to be more conscious. In the West, it works very differently. You don't do any project without a feasibility report. You first ask for it, and then you take a million dollars, you know, investment uh, calls. Here, you know, a lot of my enterprises were taking calls without conducting a feasibility report, or without even signing the brand. They almost on the verge of completing the project, and then they realize let's do a brand, which is very inefficient way of doing business, if you ask me to be honest. So, but on the uh, you know operation side, uh, I was in one of the panel discussion few months back. Uh, actually, during pandemic time, I was sitting on your seat as a moderator. So I asked uh, one of the global uh, international brands, uh, global CEO, in your Dubai hotel of 450 rooms, in, uh, they have in uh, Burj, uh, sorry, I'm forgetting the micro market, but uh, they have 450 room hotel in Dubai. So I asked him, but Dubai, yes. So I asked him that uh, there you have a staff of 200 and you have seven FNP outlets, 450 rooms, it's a vertical hotel with 200 people, you are managing that property. How come in India you have an asset in Goa with 150 keys, you require 300 people? For 10 seconds he was quiet. He didn't have an answer. Then he said that. Uh, in very simple and with a smiling face, the cultural difference is there. Nandi. That's the reason, you know, I require 300 people here and, uh, you know, 200 people there. 
So then, uh, you know, I asked now in the pandemic time, obviously owners can't afford where there's cultural issues because same Indian is going to Dubai and working, same guy is working here. So how come, uh, you know, we're going to fix this? And that's how most of the brands, after, uh, you know, in the pandemic time, they started giving skills again to the people, started giving the training because they went for layoffs and all that, and starting building the concept of multi-scaling. Otherwise, there was a, you know, taboo that if I'm standing behind the desk and the front office executive, how can I mop to a floor? This was a taboo, which, you know, it was existing, which has, I believe, in, I don't know about your hotel, but uh, I hope that is prevailing and you see every work is a work. It has nothing to do with, you know, grade A or grade B. Multi-skilling and upskilling is the new mantra. Yes, so. sir. Thank, thank you. Sir, uh, uh, any structural changes you made in your organization, the way you described by these students. So, well said that during pandemic we had to bring things down and yes, abroad they work on a 0 0.45, 0 0.6 uh, room to man ratio. But again, what he rightly said culturally, and if he understands that, we also need to appreciate that he has understood it with great depth. Whatever today manpower ratios we brought down our staff to, it will go up. It will go up because there is a fundamental difference in how when we eat in India and how when you eat abroad. In abroad, when you go, like in India, when we go for dinner, all of us, if I, we, we decide, let's go to eat food, then what do you say? Beta, two bhaji lana, or if we are supposed three of us, three kadak roti lana. Khana hai chhe, three kadak roti lana. One she brings it, hey, beta, tanda nahi lai. Achha, hey, iska chutney khatam ho gaya. But when you go abroad, you have to behave the way they expect you to, which is at one time. Even if your food gets cold, you will order at one time. You will order at one time, the waiter will come with the food once. After that, the waiter will not come back to your table. And I'm not even talking about a mid-level restaurant. I'm talking about very fine dining restaurants. And there the culture is acceptable. Hamare yaan wastage nahi karte hai, iske liye pahle bhaji mangayenge. Achha, aur chahi kya? Khaoge, kulsa khaoge, consensus banta hai. Aur bale, chalo, paneer makkan wala aur ek mangao. Waha aisa nahi hai, waha mangana hai, waste ho gaya. Ya to baan ke lao, nahi to chhod dete hai. Now, all this is part of your food cost. In India, we cannot afford these luxuries because the food cost does not, the dollar spent to rupee spent is not the same. That's why a foreigner thinks India is cheap when they come here because they have to bring it to 77, whereas for us it is 1 rupee. Uh, so, in, you cannot compare these matrices. Modernization definitely. I just want to say one very important point which he raised, which I think, sir, who left back. See, Hubri ka unne bhoat badiya example diya. I, I know Hubri, I'm from Karnataka, born and brought up in Mumbai, but my ancestors are from Karnataka and that's why I have been there many a times. And especially for our other works and other things, I've been to Hubri, Dharwad, uh, Bhatkar, Kuta, uh, Bangalore, you know, the, all the smaller towns which people have not heard of mostly. Everyone knows Bangalore and maybe Mumbai. Hubri, they opened a hotel as ITC, not as just one more hotel in Hubri. This pandemic has taught everyone the power of brand. Today, Orchid Hotel has benefited, ITC has benefited, every branded player has benefited more than a non-branded or an independent hotel owner. I am not putting them down. Please understand, because 80 years back, my grandfather was an independent brand. Kamath. Nobody knew Kamath then. He made it into a brand. 27 years back, my father made Orchid into a brand. So it's a struggle journey. How many end up becoming a long-term brand? That's more difficult today now. Why? Because today, a lot of what he said about structural changes, use of IT. To even use that IT, getting it at a good cost benefit. Today, an online travel agent who eats most of your business in your hotels gets better terms from brands than a standalone. Whether it's Zomato, Swiggy, MMT, anybody, they get better terms from brands because brand has a power. Second thing is, brand has various people who are on his payroll but will assist you as a hotel owner because at the end of the day, he has to get you a GOP. Then comes corporate support. Corporate support whereby suddenly, Acha, Orchid Kula, Oh, Acha, ITC Kula, Chalo, we have an equation with them. Kal kuch ho gaya hotel mein, ye sambali. Confidence. See, nobody is sir, one thing I disagreed is nobody cares about safety. Safety is basically, aapko paani nagaenge excuse hai. Most of our guests don't even wear masks, but waiters should wear. 
अरे आपका वेटर नहीं पहन रहा है पूरा बारह जन का फैमिली मस्त खा रहा है घूम रहा है लॉन मेन कर रहा है वो चलेगा और हमारा वेटर से कोरोना होगा सो ब्रांड कॉन्शियसनेस हैज पिक्ड अप ह्यूज पीपल है सेम डेस्टिनेशन देन Established already existing players. Correct me if I'm wrong, sir. And you have he is a treasure trove of data. Every independent owner should come to a person like him and learn how he can also become a brand maybe ten years from now if he has the strength of holding on. But if you really want extract value today from your asset, find the right brand, take advantage of the brand, and grow your asset return better. Most of our industry people die in a ego clash. That my hotel. It's not about my hotel anymore. It's about how best can your hotel do. What is the occupancy you will get? What is the property you will get? And how you will make best return from your asset? So brand importance is something which Corona has taught all of us, individual, consumer, or hoteliers. Thank you. I'll just take one minute. Uh, yeah. Vishal actually Closing touched on the. Sorry. Closing remarks. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, just uh, one minute because that's a very important topic which he touched upon. I'm glad Vishal you said that. Uh, brand is very important. I'm not doubting, but signing with the right. Brand is more important. The brand which may be very successful in Western India or in Eastern India, it's not necessary. They are going to be very successful in, uh, you know, Southern or Northern India. Make sure whether you sign yourself or you hire any consulting firm or you take any expert opinion, sign with the right brand. Otherwise, it's, you know, create bigger problems when you go for a divorce. It's easy to get married but difficult to get divorced. So takes your own time, takes six months, twelve months. You know, meet whomsoever you want to meet, but sign with the right brand. Understand how many RSOs they have, how many staff they have on their own roles, how many you know, and what's the attrition rate in their existing hotels. Ask for data. What is the GOP of their existing hotels? Okay. What's the policy of the you know banking transaction after OTA trans uh, business coming from OTA? The money is going to the brand account or it's coming to the hotel account. You know, sometime in the fancy of signing brand, we forget to ask all these very relevant and important questions, and later on, then troubles comes up. You need to be mentally prepared for all those structural and operational cha cha uh, changes in your hotel. After that, if you sign and you know what you are getting into, for sure, and you will area the occupancy and profitability on a thumb rule basis. I am saying will increase by 30 to 40 percent over a period of three to four years. So I think uh, we have time for a couple of Q&A before we uh, close this session. And I'd like to thank all of you for patiently hearing all of us. So if uh, those who want to ask questions can raise their hand, uh, introduce yourself and we'd like to, who you would like to address the question to. We can spend the next five minutes with your permission. Anybody have any questions? If there are no questions, it means two things as, as Vishal says. We have covered all the ground, there is not much to ask or... Oh, somebody is asking. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, my question is to... Can you just introduce yourself, just stand up. I am Rajiv Nanya, I look after Visit Monaco. I think I am going to speak visit? on Visit Monaco. Monaco? Yeah. And I am going to after you people. But uh, my question is, since there was a in-between leisure traffic, outbound, inbound, domestic was discussed, so, do you think this work from home is going to continue and uh, people used to take staycations in domestic hotels, that business is going to go slow down. So, how do you see the market coming up for domestic, specifically vis-a-vis -vis as 27th of March, the government says international scheduled flights are going to start? So, which of you would like to answer that? Since I, since I believe in asking questions and Thank you, Vishal. You bring me the opportunity to Will work from home continue? Yes. You know, I'm, I'm not sure if you must be aware. In the West, what's happening is there is a trend called the Great Resignation. I'm not sure any of you know what Great Resignation is. So, what, what's happening in the US and in the West is that a lot of people, because they stayed at home during COVID, decided and rethought their priorities that they will not get back to work, especially in the service industry. So you are not finding people at the airports, you are not finding people in hotels, 
restaurants, and all these people, there are lots of them, are there are millions today, who decided that we will now enrich our lives because you don't know, like Kal now, you know, because COVID is a Russian rule, you can go in, not sure you're going to come out. So the great resignation is ensured that people are putting more and more focus on their personal priorities, at least in the West. Not so much in India, but a lot of our industry is based on the West. So I, I live in Gurgaon, people in Bangalore, Bombay all know the, the call centers, knowledge centers, the scientific um, centers being set up by all the various countries are all America or Europe or India. So the great resignation is changing the way we work. Um, every international MNC is developing policies for hybrid workspaces. And you mentioned mice. Mice is going to be part of that change. Mice will become or should become, will continue to become a hybrid space from now on. You will have less and less travelers going to WTM or ITP and as many people being able to attend from international locations. So while you cannot uh, uh, remove a face-to-face -face communication discussion, but a lot of work is happening today in your own offices, I'm sure, where you simply direct to a Zoom call. So, working, look at, look at women. Women are gone from the of the workspace. And the overwhelming thought process is that you will have to allow women to work in a hybrid workspace. So this, is going, this is going to stay, I feel, unless any of you have a different opinion. What? One more thing which I want to add up, Nash, what you just said that uh, work from home, maybe specific to few sectors, will remain. More than that, uh, from the hospitality, travel and lodging perspective, for my organization, earlier even for an introductory meeting, we used to travel, uh, you know, out, uh, from the different cities also. Now everything has moved to virtual meetings. I will be traveling, my office will be traveling, only when it's very essential. So that petrol is gone. Then he's asking you, will you continue that trend? Will Virtual you show trends your company that that stays? Or will you allow now random and equal amount of travel? No, uh, I don't think uh, travel is going to be more on, from the work perspective, going to be more on the essential requirement basis. If you can do your work on virtual, in virtual meetings, that will be always be preferred. That's a, uh, from the cost perspective, much more, you know, uh, it had much more high merit than rather than practice. Uh, excuse me. Sir, I think I have a slightly contrarian view. Most of the people who are working in India being a young workforce, especially the women, especially the women, sir, don't go to a job. They go to a life. Many women, especially coming from very conservative backgrounds aren't taking up a job only to support their family. There is a corporate life, there is a corporate culture, there is a social structure, a social uh, construct around them beyond just their earning a salary. And that is why you will find especially the younger force wanting to not necessarily work from home. Work from home, especially in my friend circle, has been the more affluent and the ones who can afford to go or not go to office because this thumb is not required. India is no, Indian culture is not made for work from home. We are not a community of people who can dedicatedly give our that much time to work from home because the minute you are working at home, you are staying with your in-laws, you make tea, I the computer work, the social work which is expected of a family member is high and these become deterrents. Also, many companies have decided that no, we pay you 9 to 6, so you should work 9 to 6. Now my own nephew, he is, he is a structural engineer and he designs everything on AutoCAD and he does bridges and other things for abroad. So his job actually is at night. But his HR said no, you are not supposed to work at night because what he do all day he will do whatever he wants. Then Vichara would sit at like 11 o'clock, sit till 5, sleep, wake up little late, Again, have a social life, be with the family and all that. What the company said, no, you have to log in at night and this thing. There was an upheaval in the company. They said, boss, you want me to design the bridge? I am doing what I am supposed to do. Why are you putting time restrictions on me? 
then is as good as coming to office. So India definitely is not what the Europe is, where work from home is a punishment for many because they want to get away from their home. They want to get away from their parents. Many are still, we still stay with our parents. Abroad, the minute you are 18, 19, you leave home. So you are not responsible to your parents. Yato, till I got married now, at the age of 20, I had to tell my mother, Kure Sala Sahas, Mommy, hats off, what do you say? Kazi age she. But the minute I got married and moved into my own house, my mom stopped asking me. Her mindset changed only from the fact that now I don't stay with her. But the minute I would stay with her, in the minute when our house was renovating and we were staying with her for five months, every day I had to give her. Kadi atoye, kadi atoye, kevna kute, kai karna. My point being that our social construct and if work from home continues for a long time, leisure destinations will benefit. Because then it doesn't matter where you are working from. It's work from anywhere. So if leisure destination, if work from home continues for a long time, leisure will benefit. But I don't think work from home is going to go on for long. And especially when you're a family with kids and your school has started, again, it makes, yes, some jobs will be there, creative jobs, uh, social media, your designing. I agree. They even today, even before pandemic, many were working from Starbucks. Many people didn't have an office and you go to the Starbucks meet. So I don't think work from here is there to stay. And the biggest uh, uh, example I can give of this is TCS chairman. The chairman of TCS made a public statement in economic times saying that when the pandemic hit, saying, oh wow, work from home is here to stay and TCS will dissolve its offices and TCS will have majority of its workforce work from home. The same gentleman after 15 months said we are waiting when the offices will open and 80% of our workforce will come back. So that's the kind of, if the chairman of DCS says say this, then my opinion matters DC. DJ, you are, uh, so we have to copy to you. I hope you will moderate the... No, I, I think Rajiv had a separate question in the end, towards the end. His question was, uh, Rajiv, if I understood, was with 27 March international flights opening up, how will it impact the domestic tourism? Or will that shift and change, people will travel or not, right? I think people have got habituated and they want to travel. Yeah, there might be a little dip in the domestic tourism because international flight, your Sri Lanka's, Nepal, uh, Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore, that, uh, that will definitely pick up. People want to go. Just like what happened with Dubai. It was the first one to open up and everybody started going there. I made multiple trips. Thank you so much. It will imp impact a little bit to domestic tourism, but now Indians also know that they have to see a lot of destinations in India as well. So the opportunity exists. Newer locations, newer areas, places which you have never seen, only have heard, people are exploring that. So I think there is a quick balance which might happen. Earlier domestic tourism was hardly existing. ADGI was not in the news as much as the other Otoai or anybody was in the news. Today, ad 2 is leading the, the Yamanga Association in travel. I think that's how it's going to be. Of course, is that the right uh, way to see what you said? Uh, right. yeah. so I, I hope all our answers are taken care of. All the people who answered have taken care of your questions. Next, uh, I think it's, it's sorry. And we've run really out of time because ma'am here is giving me glares in every two minutes. So thank you so much for being a uh, patient listeners and panel members, that discussion, different points of view, but that's what it's all about. And I hope uh, you guys had a good session. Thank you very much. Thank you to our incredible speakers for a wonderful session. I hope so. We, you all enjoyed the session as much as we did. Thank you so much for taking your time and being with us. Opportunity. Thank you again. Okay.